Hi, welcome to Moina Bass Fishes. I'm Jim Moina. Today we're going to talk about the AOI standings for the 2023 Tackle Warehouse Invitationals. We're halfway through the season. We've had three of the six tournaments and this is important for those of us who are trying to qualify for the Bass Pro Tour, which is the top level in the MLF League, their organization. Um, so we've had, and it's going to take the top eight. They take the top eight guys in the final Angler of the Year standings. Angler of the Year means AO, AOY. So the top eight in the AOY standings will get the invites to the Bass Pro Tour for 2024. So basically everybody that's in this, I mean, that's pretty much the goal is to get to that next level. Um, so it's important for the fans of these of these gentlemen and uh, and the individuals themselves, including including myself. So okay, so let's get into this. Um, first of all, where do I stand? Okay, um, I am currently in fifteenth place. Uh, I've been <clears throat> after the first tournament. I was in thirty something. Then I moved up to twenty two, and now I'm fifteen, trending the right way. Uh, so that is a good thing. I have uh, I'm 15th place with 479 points out of the possible 600. 200 points are possible with each tournament. If you get first place in a tournament, you get 200 points. If you get second place, you get 199 points. Third place, 198 points, and so on. It works with each place downward. It's one less point. Okay, and there's 150 anglers in each tournament. So that's kind of how that works. So there's 200 possible points per tournament. Now, earlier this year, um, I, uh, I kind of went through past history. And to me, my guest estimate as to where eventually the cutoff for eighth place is going to be is going to be... Um, a total, after six tournaments, a total of 1,014 points is going to be needed to uh, finish eighth place. Now, I could be, that's just a guesstimate, but it is based on past uh, um, standings in the what was then called the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. Um, there was a different number of anglers in those tournaments, so, uh, you know, I had to do a little fudging. So, but I'm just, my own estimate, 31st place average which would uh be the equivalent of earning which would be the equivalent of uh, earning 169 points per event so um so where is that uh eighth place position right now how far am i out of eighth place uh eighth place right now is currently held by spike stoker and he has 528 points, which means I'm, okay, 21, I'm like 49 points behind that, which is quite a bit, really. That's, uh, that's quite a bit. And so Spike has been averaging um, 24th place uh, per tournament to generate this amount of points. Now, let me say something, okay, it's not going to end up, after six tournaments, the average is not going to end up at 24th because... You know, I've been fishing in circuits, pro circuits of various forms since 1995. And just the more tournaments you have, as you have more tournaments, that average number of finish, you know, for the cut line falls with each added tournament. So that's just, it just kind of inches downward after each tournament. So uh, we've had three tournaments after the fourth tournament, it might be an average of 26th or 27th place to uh, make that eighth position. That's just kind of how these, the average of this thing kind of, kind of falls. So, um, yeah, so Spike there, he's in eighth place. Um, let's see, what else we got to get to here? Uh, total need, got that, 600 possible. Uh, so, with 600 points remaining to be had possible, one angler, if he wins all three terms, could get 600 points. Uh, it's highly unlikely. I don't think anybody's ever won three terms in a row at this level. Very unlikely. But 
Let's not eliminate that possibility. So let's go down to see who has. I'm on, I'm on the uh, Major League Fishing's website right now into the invitational standings on this uh, laptop in front of me. So if we go down to who has, you know, if you take 10,014 minus 600, that puts you down to 414. So anybody who has 414 points or higher is capable of earning 600 points and achieving that 1,014 that 1,014 point level or higher. So who is at 414 points right now? Okay, in 44th place, we have Steve Lopez with 414 points. So according to my figuring, if he wins all three events, He's going to end up with a total of 1,014 points, which should put him in 8th place uh, and qualify him for the Bass Pro Tour. Highly unlikely at this point, but, uh, you know, let's not... <laughs> you got to believe, man. You got to believe. And even the guys that are a point or two under that, you know, I my... My target of 1,014 points is it's probably not going to fall right on that. It's probably plus or minus 10 points either way of that. Um, so even some of the guys that are just a few points, you know, we, here we got Tom Monsoor at 413. So even those guys, you know, they got to they got to be thinking how they can win every tournament the rest of the way. Highly unlikely, but like in Tom's case, he's won on the Potomac River. He's won on the Mississippi River. Those are two of our final three tournaments. And the other one is our next tournament at Lake of the Ozarks. I don't know how Tom feels about Lake of the Ozarks, but um, I'm sure he'll uh, do everything he can to uh, place the best he can there. All right, so um, so that puts us, so that's 40, so Steve Lopez was in 44th place. And so that means there's 44 anglers still mathematically in it, as far as I'm concerned. The rest are done. 45th place and out is pretty much over, which does include Tom Monsoor. Um, I mean, unless if I'm, unless I mean, if he pulls off three wins in a row, and uh, um, and I'm slightly off on my number on my target number, then I mean, so I guess. It's not completely out, but let's just let's just say I, I'm right on my ten one thousand and fourteen my one thousand fourteen points. Uh, that would put anybody less than forty fourth place is out. So, and some of the names that you'll recognize, or at least I recognize. Um, I mean, a lot a lot of these fellas are young guys. I don't know them all. I don't. In fact, most of these guys I don't know. I don't recognize them. Uh, and I apologize to those anglers who I don't recognize who their names and so forth. Um, but some of the names, some of the established veterans that are, you know, that are basically eliminated. One would be Tom Monsoor, um, Tyler Stewart at 50th place. Uh, I know him because he gave me a ride in probably about four or five years ago. I broke down in a tournament. Tyler uh, was kind enough to um, come by my broken boat and uh, take me and my fish uh, back to the weigh-in. Nice man. And uh, to this day, I still appreciate that. I'd love to see him uh, still in the fight. Oh, let's see. We've got... Uh, uh, here's a guy I just met in 55th, Kyle Weisenberger. Um, he was kind enough to help me out with uh, getting my boat trailer at the last tournament. So I didn't have to drive across the super windy lake. <laughs> so he's a uh, nice guy there. Wish he was still uh, in contention there for the top eight. Um, we've got... Uh, um, here's a guy from Minnesota, Kyle Shuda. He fishes uh, some of the top circuits here in Minnesota. He's, he's out. Uh, Marty Robinson... He's out. He, I believe, he does fish the Bass Pro Tour. And there were five. There were five guys that. Um, I heard this while I was watching one of the uh, early broad, one of the early live streams of one of the Bass Pro Tour events, where there were, or maybe it might have been the uh, one of the invitational events too. Um, but anyways, it was mentioned by the broadcast crew that five of the Bass Pro Tour anglers were 
fishing all of the events in these invitationals. So maybe perhaps Marty Robinson's might be one of them. Um, but he is out. Uh, let's see. Lane Olson. Don't know him. Jimmy Reese from California. He's in 71. He's out. Mark Daniels Jr. He's a Bass Pro Angler in 73rd. I don't know if he... Now, some of these guys may not have fished all of them either. Uh, some of these Bass Pro Tour guys. So Mark Daniels Jr. is in 73rd. Uh, Andrew Nordby. Is he... Is that the... Uh, is he the guy with the uh, YouTube channel that's popular? He's in 74th. Terry Bolton. Man, he's been in it as long as I have. He's having an off year. He's in 75th. Oh, geez. Uh, David Walker. I think he's been at all three of them. He's in 81st. It's, things aren't going his way. It, he's a Bass Pro Tour angler. Here's Now, Jacob Wheeler's in 83rd, but I don't think he was at the last event. Um which is a blessing because <laughs> he'd be challenged. He'd be challenging for what because he was doing good after two events. He was, I think, in the top eight, taking up one of those top eight positions, and <clears throat> and now he's down at eighty third after not fishing the last one. John Cox, same thing. I don't think he fished them all. Shaw Grigsby, I think he has fished all three. He's down here. Uh, Laker Howell, I think. Isn't he Randy Howell's son? He's down here in 88th. Paul Ias, 89th. You know, Paul Ias, of course, been around forever. He was on the Bass Pro Tour last year. Same with Shaw Grigsby. They were eliminated. Um, this Wyatt Franken's kid in 90th. He's a, supposedly a Texas uh, stud. Uh, didn't quite get it all together in the first three tournaments. He's going to be out. Uh, another guy from Minnesota, Kyle Menke. He's out. Brian Latimer with uh he's got he's been around long he's been around for a while now and uh, uh i don't know what happened he finished uh i think he made the final day cut in fact on okeechobee or i know for sure the third day cut maybe the final day but his last two turns didn't go so well but he's got a great he's got a great youtube channel that's wildly popular um so if you want to check that out and uh yeah so those are Rami Colson's not having a great season. Pete Pons. Um, these are just some guys that I recognize the name. Val Osenke, he's the owner of the uh, Gambler Lures, I believe. Well, I know he is, or at least he used to be. He's having a rough one. Mike McClellan, former Bass Pro Tour angler. He's, I think he's been in all three of them. He's not doing so well. Um, yeah, so it's just, uh, there's the old... Uh, Charlie Evans, love that guy. He's down. He's not quite where he needs to be. But anyhow, so enough of the guys that are out of it. Let's let's see who's in it. Okay, first place, Ron Nelson. All right, he's got 581 points. Um, he's uh, it's gonna be tough to move him out of the top eight at this point. He won Angle of the Year in the Tack Warehouse Pro Circuit a couple years ago. Um, if I click on his name, I can uh, um, look at his uh, finishes over the last few years. And, for example, in the TAC Warehouse Pro Circuit, in the four years he did it, in the annual of the year standing, he's got, he's got a ninth, a first, a 13th, and a 20th. So, Ron Nelson is in first right now. Uh, he's going to be tough to move out of that position. Or out of the top eight for sure um, and the way I <clears throat> and for example with him so he's got 581 points which means he needs 433 points to make 1014 points which is my estimation of the cut level for eighth place so with 433 points needed by Ron, that means he needs to average 55th point six seventh place out of the remaining three tournaments, which is still not a given. I mean, by no means, no, no, none of these guys. It's not a given, even for Ron. It's uh, there's always it's it's a challenge to uh, do well in these tournaments, and to do it three times in a row is uh, even a bigger challenge. So in second place is a Bridgeford Foods teammate of mine who 
I do a lot of promotional stuff with for Bridgeford is Matt Stefan, and he's got a nice YouTube channel, by the way. He's got 544 points, um, and he's been doing this for a long time. Um, he is sitting in a good, really good position right now, and he's got uh, of the three tournaments left. Uh, I know he loves fishing the Mississippi River tournaments. Doesn't mean you're going to do good at them, but he's got some good experience there. He's got some good history there, so that one he's, you know, I'm sure that one he feels good about. And uh, the other two, I don't know what his history is on the Potomac or Lake of the Ozarks. Uh, the guy in third, Colby Schrumpf, uh, he's got 541 points. Now, now looking, I was looking at his, uh, I don't really know Colby much. So I went into his, you know, I clicked on his name, looked into his tournament history. And uh, he's, this is one of the best years he's having right now. So can he hold on is the question. Um, I mean, really, I mean, this is, he is having the best year he's ever had after just three tournaments. So can he hold on? That's, we'll see. Uh, the next guy, Martin v v Villa. Uh, I met him last year at the James River because um, we both made the cut to the third day and I got a chance to meet Martin. Really uh, nice guy. Uh, he's kind of newer to it. Um, he's only been in, at this level for a few years now, but uh, having a great season so far, sitting in fourth with, uh, well, he's tied for third, I guess it would be with, He's tied with Colby with 541 points. One point behind that in fifth is uh, my, uh, dang it, the screen went black. Okay, we're back. Um, Michael Harlan, or Mikhail Harlan, Michael Harlan, probably Michael. Uh, he's, uh, and I looked his up, up, you know, he's one of these newer guys. You know, he's got some BFL history, some Toyota Series history. He's, um, but the thing going for him is Lake of the Ozarks, his, his hometown is, is on the shores of Lake of the Ozarks. So he's got to be feeling good about that one. Uh, I'm sure he expects to uh, hold position in this uh, standings here after this next one. Don't know how he's going to do on, I don't know his history on the other two tournaments, uh, Waters, but he's got to be feeling good about this fourth tournament on Lake of the Ozarks. In sixth place, and this is the only uh, Bass Pro Tour angler um, that is occupying one of these top eight positions right now, and that would be Michael Neal, who has won Angler of the Year in this, uh, what used to be the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. I think he won it two years in a row. And obviously he's, uh, and he's been excelling on the Bass Pro Tour. Uh, watch out, this guy's... Definitely going to be challenging for one of these top eight positions. There's no doubt about it. I don't see him. Uh, I mean, you never know. Maybe And maybe he's one of the guys that's not doing all five. So if he misses one of these last ones, well, then that'll help. But see, and why it's important, you know, the fact that he's already in the Bass Pro Tour, why is, why is that a significant thing? Because it is. That is because if... A Bass Pro Tour, a current Bass Pro Tour angler occupies one of these top eight positions. That means only seven of us in the Tackle Warehouse Invitational field that finish in the top eight here, that means only seven of us will actually advance. Because what they do then is one of the guys, they just go down on the requalifying list for the Bass Pro Tour for the next year. That means they take one extra guy down on their angler of the year list and move them forward to the next year. So one less guy will be eliminated off the Bass Pro Tour. So it kind of protects some of their, you know, it's a little bit of protection for some of those guys. And, uh, you know, we just, as as me, me being a top, you know, as not top, but me as being a, a tack warehouse invitational, angler trying to qualify the Bass Pro Tour, I just have to deal with that reality. Uh, you know, there's going to be guys occupying, there's going to be Bass Pro Tour guys occupying these top eight positions. So as long as I make, as long as I'm occupying somewhere in the top eight, I'm fine. Okay, so I just got to go out and do that. And it doesn't matter. 
All right, so next we have, uh, um, well, there's one other thing I wanted to say about, or no, was it Coley Shrump? Okay, yeah, and, okay, let me back this up. I think it was Coley Shrump who actually is from Sunrise Beach, Missouri. No, he's from Illinois. Well, who, one of these guys. Okay, Michael Harlan. Yeah, he's from Sunrise Beach, Missouri. Yeah, that was him. So Lake of the Ozarks will be a home field advantage for him. All right, then we go to um, Gray Buck in seventh. Gray Buck, I think he's, he's a northern angler uh, from Pennsylvania. He's been doing well the last few years. Um, let's take... Pull up some of his stats. He's going to be a tough guy to knock out of this top eight. So, for example, um, in 2022 in the Pro Circuit, Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit, he finished 12th. year before that, 58th. But the year before that, he finished 3rd. So, very capable of a top eight finish, for sure. And going back to some of his stats, Toyota Series stuff he's done. He's done well in that. He's, I know he's got some wins. So he's a man to deal with for sure. And in eighth place, Spike Stoker. Uh, I've met him, but don't know a whole lot about him. I know he's from Texas. And uh, he's, wow. Okay, I'm pulling up his stats, and he's really... He hasn't been doing the MLF stuff for very long at all. So, I mean, he's got some Toyota stuff, a few Toyota stuff, but not at all. But, man, he's kicking some butt for sure so far. So that is your eighth place position at 528 points. And now, going from ninth, now ninth place, Keith Carson. Don't really know him. Where's he from? He's from uh, Florida. So he'll probably feel right at home fishing the Potomac and fishing the uh, Mississippi River because a lot of Florida fishing, shallow water flipping and shallow water type fishing. And that's what the Potomac and the Mississippi River are going to be all about. And in 10th, we got Dakota Ebear. He won one of our events this year. And he's in 10th. Um, don't know, don't you know? He's and he's a Bass Pro Tour angler as well. So he could be if he makes it in that top eight. He's going to save one more guy from elimination from the Bass Pro Tour. Eleventh, uh, Scotty Valines with 498 points. Uh, he's I believe he's from Texas. Don't know him. Twelfth, Braxton Sexter. Don't know him much. Thirteenth, Nick Hatfield. Uh, don't know him very much, although, is he the guy that won? I wonder if he won that Dale Hollow tournament I was in a few years ago. I'm going to look and see. I was in a uh, Dale Hollow tournament back a couple of years ago, and I, for some reason I want to say it was him that won. But looking... Um, God, he won a college tournament once. Uh... All right, no, I'm not seeing any wins for him. No, yeah, I must be thinking of somebody else. Anyways, uh, the 14th would be Brock Reinkemeyer. Oh, that's the guy that was from Warsaw. Yeah, he's uh, Lake of the Ozarks is right in his backyard. I mean, he's Warsaw, Missouri is like right below Truman Lake in Missouri, but then just downstream of there is Lake of the Ozarks. So I would imagine that he has quite a bit of experience in both of them body of water. So um, I'm sure he's probably, I mean, if he does what he's supposed to do on Lake of the Ozarks, um, I'm sure he's not going to be, he's going to hold position or maybe move up. I'm in 15th place with 479 points. And now let me just say something about, the, okay, uh, I kind of went through this with Ron Nelson and his points. So, with me, I'm at 479 points. So, 
let's say I win the next three tournaments in this trail, you know, highly, highly improbable, if not impossible. But let's just say there's 600 points left. So if you take the 600 points that are left, add it to my current total of 479, that puts me at 1,079. That would put me at 1,079 points. Okay. So that gives me a little bit of cushion over 1,014 points. So let's subtract 1,014 points off of there. That's 65 points cushion. That's a 65 point cushion, which means out of the following, out of the next three tournaments, um, that means I only have 65 points to give total, which means basically. Um, that would mean, okay, so 600 points total minus 65 is 535. So that means I've got to get 535 points out of the possible 600, which is what that means. And to extrapolate that or move that to the next step, um... So that would be an average of about 20, you know, two 22nd places and a 21st place is what I'm thinking is what that would amount to. So I got to average in the low 20s out of the next three tournaments in order for me to make it. And, and that's a tall order because I haven't finished that high yet out of the first three. I've got like a 30 something and a low 40s and a high 40s. So, uh, to, I mean, I haven't done it yet, but so as far as my experience on the last three, this is how that goes. Lake of the Ozarks, I haven't fished there for many years. Probably got three, maybe three tournaments there many years ago. Uh, one in the fall, I believe, and a couple spring tournaments. Uh, I actually fished with George Conkerin in a Bass Invitational. I paired with him one day there. And, uh, but anyways, um, that was like a 96 or 97, long time ago. But anyways, uh, I never really did that great there. So, gonna have to, you know, it was a long time ago though. I know a lot more about what I'm doing on that type of water. So, maybe we can pull off a good finish there. And then, uh, the Potomac River would be the June tournament. That one I have had some success on, uh, consistently in the money there, had some high finishes there, so doesn't mean I'm going to do it again, but uh, I feel like I know what I can, you know, I feel like that's a, a strong one for me, potentially. And then the last one, the Mississippi River out of La Crosse. Okay, I live in Minnesota, La Crosse, Wisconsin, borders. Minnesota, so you th you think I'd like be a local ace there, but I'm really not. Uh, I only get down there about once every three years or so, and I don't I haven't I don't have any. I might have finished uh, many years ago, many years ago in a BFL. I might have got like a seventh or eighth one time, but uh, in recent years, in the last ten years, I've gotten. Uh, I got a check there, but, you know, it's a place where I've gotten checks, but low checks. So, that one, so out of the last three, I mean, they all were, all three of them worry me. <laughs> I mean, you just never know. The ones you think you're going to do good in, you do poor, and the ones you think, the, th the ones that you think don't really favor you doing well, suddenly you do well. So, all right, so how about the guys that are right behind me? Uh... We got John Boyles, we got Chicapo Galelli in 17th, who, that guy finds a way to get stuff done, man. That guy gets around fish, he's a force. Um, and he's, that's a guy from Italy, so he's really, I mean, you never, you never know who's, you know, you get somebody, wherever they're from, you don't know how they're going to be until they've been around a few years, and 
uh, he certainly has proven um, that he knows how to get around fish. You got Joshua Weaver, who's, uh, he won one of our events this year. Lance Crawford, Jason Vance. 21st place, Ty Ah from, uh, from the West. He's at 465 points. So even though he's six places behind me, he's only 14 points off of my pace. And uh, he's a uh, stud out West. So, I mean, he knows, he knows how to get it done. And then we got, uh, let's see, we got Connor Cunningham, William Fletcher, Tom Reddington, Kyle Hall. Kyle Hall, who won two tournaments last year, including the Toyota Series Championship, was one of the two. Then he won, then he got like a second on Champlain and won one on Champlain. He's in 25th. Uh, but those, those were all forward-facing sonar victories he had, so... Uh, Lake of the Ozarks, he might be able to get get it going there, but on uh, Potomac, the Mississippi River, he can just shut it off because <laughs> it ain't going to do much. At least as far as I know, there might be some something that somebody knows. Let's see, Cal Lane, he's one of the Lane brothers' uh, kids. Um, I forget, I don't think it's Bobby Lane's kid. It's one of the others. Uh, Justin Cooper, Jane Paris, Cody Pike, Travis Harriman, Fred Rombanis, he's a Bass Pro Tour angler. He's at 440, 440 points in 32nd place. He, uh, you know, any Bass Pro Tour anglers, I mean, they got potential to run three good terms together. Alex Davis, Marshall Robinson, I think that's Marty Robinson's kid. Uh, Cody Spetz, Cole Bredin, Eric Panzeroni. Drew Gill, Rusty Zalewski, Rusty in 39th. He won the uh, uh, title championship a couple years ago. He's at 425 points, so he's going to have to rattle off three top tens. Colin, Colin Crawford, Christian Greco, he's in 41st with 421. Yeah, any of these last couple guys, you know, Cody Patet, Drew Boggs, and Steve Lopez. Highly improbable, they may crack the top eight, but not impossible. So, there you have it. Um, that's kind of the rundown. It's I'm in 15th, but man, it's still, I'm, it still seems like a tall mountain. To, it seems like I got most of the mountain left to climb. Um, and, and in fact, Actually, for me to be in 15th right now is like a minor, I mean, that's like surprising to me because I've really, it's really been a struggle in these tournaments. The first tournament on Okeechobee, um, the first day went really well, had a good catch. But then the second day, and the th second day was just brutally tough, and it took me a long time to start catching anything. And by the great, you know, I luckily caught a six pounder that totally saved my butt, which moved me on to the, you know, moved me on to the third day and <clears throat> got to fish the third day where I didn't really catch them that great, kind of average catch. Then the second tournament, I was in the 80s after first day, rallied, made the, rallied on the second day with a good catch, made the, you know, I finished in 49th after the, and the cut was 50th, so then I got to move on to the third day and just kind of had an average catch the third day. And then, of course, the last tournament at Lake Dardanelle, or not at Dardanelle, that was the Toyota Series, um, at uh, Lake Eufaula in Oklahoma. Um, that one, was that was a brutal, I mean, that was a, uh, that was a comeback I'm very proud of, <laughs> but just didn't come back far enough, really, I, just enough, minimum, I mean, I came back just enough. So I started the first day, after the first day, I was a 90th, but as of noon, I, noon, halfway through the day, I still hadn't even had a keeper in the boat, and I had lost some key fish already to that point. Um, just, it was just, I was just in a brutal mindset at that point, just how, how I, literally I'd lost a whole limit of fish, and I still hadn't one in the boat yet as of noon. And so I was in a brutal spot mentally, still just dog, dog determined to pull something out of this. 
And I did. I pulled out an average limit. Was in 90th place. And then the next day, I had a good day. Um, so I pulled up, pulled it up to, uh, you know, 50th place, which was the cut line. And then on the last day, I just had a bad day. The last day, I only caught two fish. Gained two points. Finished 48th. But I've really... Have not had. I've only had really three good, decent, above average days out of nine days, and somehow I'm in fifteenth place. So, if I can somehow like just get things clicking and rolling consistently, man, um, it'd be. I mean, I don't need to be putting myself in ninetieth place after day one. That's just that is just brutal. So. I need to put myself like in ninth place after day one. That would be sweet. And then just continue on with that kind of a catch through the tournament, through each one of these. But anyhow, that's what I got to say. That is how things stack up with the Tackle Warehouse Invitationals after three tournaments here in 2023. Thanks for watching this video. And Lake of the Ozarks, uh, I leave, I travel there later this week so the following week then will be that competition over